All right, so this video is going to be continuing our coverage of linear momentum and center of mass, this time by doing some practice problems with the concepts we covered in the last video. And we'll start off with a problem dealing with the concept of impulse. So in a collision lasting from t equals 0 to, oh, that should be from t equals 0 to t equals 2, basically a two-second uh, collision or force, uh, the force acting on a two kilogram object is given by this equation right here and what we want to do is find the total impulse the average force acting on it as well as the final velocity so we'll start off by uh, finding the total impulse and if you'll remember from last video uh, impulse J equals the sum of force with respect to time and because we have a, an equation for force in terms of time, that makes it very easy. We just have to plug in the equation. So it's the integral from time t equals 0 to time t equals 2 from the question of 8t minus 4t squared. Now that comes out to be uh, 4t squared minus 4 over thirds t cubed from 2 to 0, or j equals 16 thirds kilogram meters per second and you could obviously put that in decimal if you wanted to but uh, I'll just leave it as that improper fraction basically we have you know five and a third kilogram meters per second from here we want to know the average force and we know that the average of anything is the uh, sum of that with respect to time so sum of force dt over that change well this is just the impulse and we already know the impulse so we plug in uh, 16 thirds over 2 seconds so we get that the average force is 8 thirds newtons or 2 and 2 thirds newtons depending on whether or not you want to use the improper fraction and as the final part of this problem we determine the final velocity well we know that uh, momentum by definition, is just the mass times the velocity. And we know that the change in momentum, it goes from uh, 0 to 16 thirds. So 16 thirds is our final momentum. And we have a 2 kilogram mass. And so the velocity is therefore 8 thirds meters per second in the direction of the force, so the positive direction. So continuing now with our momentum practice, uh, we'll look at a situation in which a bullet going 100 meters per second is fired at a 1 kilogram block attached to a uh, 50 newton per meter spring. And what we want to know is the initial velocity of the block once the bullet has hit it and lodged in here. And we want to know uh, the maximum compression of the spring. In other words, how far does the block go inwards due to the bullet hitting it? And so we'll start off with our uh, initial momentum. We know that there are the sum of the forces outside the system is zero. So our initial momentum equals our final momentum. And we know that uh, because the block is stationary, the only momentum we have initially is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. But what we have moving uh, immediately after the collision is both the block and bullet moving at some velocity to the right. So our mass for the second part of the momentum is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block, which I'll represent with a capital B, times some V final. Now we have all the known masses as well as the initial velocity of the bullet. So from here it's just a matter of plugging in our known uh, numbers. And here we have you know, 1 plus 0 0.005 times V final. And we get a V final value of 0.5 meters per second. Now from here it gets a bit tricky we have to incorporate into our uh, interpretation of how this block moves the energy. So we have the initial uh, velocity now of the block bullet combination. So we can derive then their kinetic energy, which we know is mv squared 
over 2 or uh, 1.005 because that's the sum of their velocities times 0.5 squared over 2. Now at this point after the block and bullet have combined there's no friction acting on the system so we know that all the energy must be conserved in other words the kinetic energy at this point is equal to the potential energy when it gets all the way back here and the spring is you know very compressed down in here so we can take our kinetic energy equation we've solved for the 0.5 2 times 2 set it equal to kx squared in this case that's 50 x squared over 2, the 2's cancel out, and we get x squared equals 1.005 times 0.5 squared over 50, just from algebra, or the final compression of the spring is 0.07 meters. Now we'll do one last momentum practice problem before we move on to uh, our video on the concept of center of mass. So for the most part we've been looking at equations for momentum in one dimension just because it makes things simpler but now we'll look at a uh, 2d problem in this case we have particles s and c with their initial velocities vs and vc uh, and then they combine and have some final velocity we'll call vf just to make things simple and what we want to do is solve for vf in other words, we need to know both the magnitude of VF as well as its direction. And there's two ways to do this. The simplest of which is just vector algebra, basically. So you have, you know, um, S, or we'll go with MS times its vector, plus the mass of C times its velocity vector equals the final momentum which will be uh, both of them both of their masses because they act as one now times their final vector and from here all we have to do is some algebra and we get that the final velocity vector is just the sum of the two momentums that the initial particles had divided by their total mass but this doesn't tell us a whole lot because we can't really uh, derive the direction of uh, VF too well. So what we can do is break these up dimensionally. And so we get that uh, the X velocity equals the mass of S times its initial X velocity plus the same thing for C all over, oh, I forgot a parenthesis there, all over their total mass. And then you do the same thing in the y direction. So the final y velocity will be uh, the initial y velocities of the s and y particles times their respective masses and uh, divided by the total mass of the system afterwards. So here you have the two components of this vf vector and from here it'd be very easy to visualize. You have your VFX and your VFY making up the components of this vector. Lastly we're going to be looking at uh, elastic collisions, in other words where the uh, kinetic energy is conserved. So your final and initial kinetic energies are the same. And we'll start off by looking at these two particles A and B which have respective masses of 3 and 10 kilograms and velocities of 5 meters per second to the right and 1 meter per second to the left. But we'll just set the uh, positive direction as being to the right so we can say that the 10 kilogram B mass has a velocity of negative 1 meters per second. And what we want to do is solve for their velocities, their v final a and v final b, after the collision. So we'll start off, as you usually should, with momentum. So the total momentum of the system is just the combined momentums of a and b. Or 3 times 5, you have 3 kilograms times 5 meters per second for a, plus 10 times negative 1, or 15 minus 10 equals 5 kilogram meters per second to the right. Now that we have that out of the way, what we can do is uh, 
solve for the energy, uh, basically. You have to realize that uh, Ke0 will equal the final kinetic energy as well. So we solve for how much initial kinetic energy there is in the system. You have 3 times 5 squared over 2 plus 10 times negative 1 squared over 2. Or 3 times 25 is 75 plus uh, 5 yields your uh, 42.5 uh, joules, basically, of energy in the system. Now that we've solved for both of those quantities, uh, we can basically set up equations for the final velocities of both A and B, and then because we'll have two equations with two unknowns, we can then solve for those uh, quantities. So we know that 3 times the velocity of A plus 10 times the velocity of B will equal 5, because that's the total momentum. And we know that uh, 3 times the velocity of A squared over 2 plus 10 times the velocity of B squared over 2 will be 42.5. Now, uh, what you do basically is you solve for one in terms of the other. I would use the momentum equation over here. And then uh, plug that in to the energy equation for either one of these quantities. And solve for VA and then VB respectively. Now, I'm not going to do that for you. That's just a bunch of uh, meaningless algebra and calculation. But you come out that uh, VA is negative 4.23 meters per second and VB is 1.77 meters per second. Now I would verify that with your own work but I'll just leave the answers up there for you. Now in the next video we're going to be uh, concluding our coverage of this section by looking at the concept of center of mass and perhaps doing more practice.